that Illmatic. That was that was the bar. That was the bar. Yes, that Ill, was the bar. Illmatic, Illmatic was the is bar. Ridiculous. There's nothing. Illmatic. Can, listen, Illmatic to me, that's an album that changed hip hop. Because he started, he took it from Rakim and and Big Daddy Kane, but he took it to another another street level shit that they wasn't talking about. But right now, a lot of new rappers and older rappers are looking up to you. How do you feel to be like a a, a living prodigy? I mean, it's a prop, it's a blessing. I'm a product of hip hop. You know what I'm saying? I'm a product from of the old school and the newest of the new. Back in the '90s, hip hop looked a lot different and sounded a lot different than it did today. But as we have the big three of this generation, that generation had a big three of its own. And all you all day about who's the best MCs, Biggie, Jay-Z, and know. And of those three, they were all dropping classic freshman albums, giving everybody a reason to have them in the conversation. Biggie's first album was Ready to Die. Hoves was Reasonable Doubt, and Nas had Illmatic. There are always certain moments in history when you look back and realize the switch is flipped and change with the new energy enters the atmosphere and slowly makes its way into the norm. Back when artists were rapping like this, it took an artist out of New York to flip the switch and rap like this. I ain't no joke. I used to let the mic smoke. Now I slam it when I'm done and make sure it's broke. I remember back when majority of artists were sounding like this. I am a super duper trooper. Used to the bottom of scuba. So I'm on the grind. Skateboard or scooter. Till I am the king of my castle, Cooper. To flipping the switch to sounding like this. In New York, I'm Millie Rock. Every one of these tracks are fire, in my opinion, and it shows how each generation innovates with the resources and influence that they have around them at that time. Nas is another one who was a part of that flip switch as his album dropping was almost a blueprint to the way people would rap after him. It is argued that Ho was influenced and adapted the style as well while he crafted his own. As before, he sounded more like this. You could have never got it on the first drop, but never to worry, I'm not in a hurry. Take your time, cause it's my problem. I still gotta set so. To adapting and then sounding like this. Well, I was fit that wonder rhyme shit. Me and my conglomerate shall remain anonymous. Caught up in the finest shit. Man, it's crazy because both flows are different and he snaps on each one. Wayne has spoken on being influenced by Hove. And you can see Wayne's influence stylistically and lyrically in the following generation. So we can almost say without Illmatic and the pressure it put on artists of his time, the future might look different today. This video, we're gonna take a step into Illmatic and discuss some interesting facts about one of hip hop's most influential albums. Illmatic was dedicated to Nas's incarcerated friend, Illmatic Ice. I dedicate Illmatic to my man Illmatic Ice doing time for murder right now, cause he's a strong man and he made his own rules for the game and he didn't take nothing from nobody. And he was kind of like, a strong path to follow and look at, even though he got caught up and misled into the wrong situation. He also reminisces on the moments that gave him the passion to pursue the art of lyrics and rhyming on beats. Ever since he was nine, he was going to park jams. No money involved, no lights, no cameras. Just good people and good fun and dope rapping. When growing up, he would also participate in other areas of hip hop like being a graffiti writer and even did a little break dancing before he decided to focus on the mic. He was a big fan of freestyling and had mad respect for anyone performing it, but he also loved those who were able to pen poems and craft lyrical pieces 
that told stories and had meaning behind it. This attention to detail had his peers looking at him as one of the saviors of hip hop and was the reason this album was so highly anticipated. I had the Illmatic on bootleg, but she was so hey, but we was all dead. According to Nas, his most memorable recording session for his Illmatic album was with legendary DJ, DJ Premier, saying Premier was the producer that wanted to make sure the track was right. He said that was his best session with him because Premier was willing to try all types of sounds and work to find the right techniques. He listened to all of Nas's ideas and Nas reciprocated the same energy and everything worked out smoothly. The first record for Illmatic was Halftime. Time up. <laughs> no, not that one. Nasty Nas in your area. About to cause mass hysteria. In 1992, there was a romantic thriller that went by the name of Zebrahead. On the soundtrack for the movie was a record off of Illmatic called Halftime. This was the very first song recorded by Nas, initially just for the movie. And with Miles' success of the song, with the added music video, that led to halftime being on the Illmatic track list two years later. Now, one day, Nas was in a session with Arch Professor, and Nas randomly asked him if he thought Q-Tip would work with him. Large professor told him most definitely and that Q was actually asking about Nas recently. They both ended up at Fight Dog's basement. And Q-Tip says, I, if we're going to make a track together, we got to make it this one. And he plays the beat for One Love. Large professor hit me and told me, yo, you need to link up with Nas. I know you got it. It was Large and Akinelli and Nas that came out. We had a little set up in Fife's basement. Nas was like, yeah, I just need that shit you do. You know what I'm saying? Like, that mystic shit. I played him what was to become One Love. Like, yo, you know, like one day we were chilling in the rest and you know, I'm cutting up records and he was like, man, you think Q-Tip won't work with me? I'm like, hell fucking yeah. And you know, we wound up over at Fife's crib, man in the basement and tips like, yo, if we work, we gonna use this record and plays the record for One Love. Now this is one of my favorite songs on the album. And a good example of really seeing where artists of today, like Cole, might have gotten their inspiration from. Um, You know, friends of mine is locked up and I just started, started noticing everybody was putting One Love at the end, you know, it was like unity. You gotta remember, this is the, this is the album that changed rap to you can have multiple hit producers on one rap album. And he's right. This was one of the first times that an artist had a heavyweight team of producers, because at the time, most artists had one producer for their whole album, with the exception of a few. It's almost like if we heard Cole making an album produced by Metro, Dr. Dre, 40 and Boy Wonder, and Ye. So having the streets crown him as the savior of hip hop, mixed with a heavyweight team of producers, you can see why this album was so highly and heavily anticipated. One Love is also a song that has you rocking with the beat, but when you take in the lyrics, you realize how dark and sad the story and the message behind it is. It's truly a favorite. Now, not only was this the song that set the tone for the album, but also put Nas on the grand stage as a top artist to watch in the game. What's even more impressive about this is Nas cleared this opening verse in one take in his recording session. New York State of Mind, I was just really, he, we found that sample together. He was like, you know, can we just play records and just find stuff? He said, that's how you know, Large used to do it. I was like, cool. So when we heard that piano sample, we both looked up at the same time when we heard that melody. And he was like, can you hook that up? I was like, done. Hooked it up. 
And then uh, when he goes in the booth, he goes in there with like, he brought like 20 people with him and they're all in the booth with him. And I'm like, yo, y'all got to be quiet. You can't be talking. And, and, and then they're going, yo, Thun, pass that, Thun. Yo, pass that, yo, pass that Henny, Thun. And I'm like, yo, y'all got to be quiet. And then they're kind of just freestyling it. So when he said, he looks down at the paper and says, I don't know how to start this. I'm like, it's coming. So I'm like counting them like this. And he just happens to look up and goes, yo. And then just starts kicking the verse. So and did in one take, and we would just like. And then I remember when he did the whole take, he goes, "Well, how was that? Was that cool? You know, all shy and everything. Was that cool? We were like, dude, we about to get, New York's about to go crazy." Now I remember when I first heard this track at my homie's house back in 2010. The internet hitting us was heaven for music lovers like us because we were just in high school, finally able to do real deep dives into a bunch of albums from years before us. When he played New York State of Mind, he was rapping it back like he wrote it himself. And it definitely added to the aura of the track. I'm not gonna lie. The track sounded like you're moving through smoke about to enter the world that is Illumatic. And if you're someone who likes to walk everywhere, or you're one who takes transit, or any place where you rock headphones, as you travel, I suggest playing this album and seeing what you think. One of the first rap albums to be bootlegged. I had the Illmatic on bootleg. The shit was so hard, but we was all dead. While creating Illmatic, the word was strong that it was starting to shape up to be a fantastic album. So much so that this became one of the first albums that got bootlegged before its official date, it was set to drop. As the 90s continued, a lot more albums had this issue. But Nas's Illmatic was one of the first to have to go through it. Now, this would hurt the sales of certain 90s albums, but it was labeled a classic nonetheless. If you look at the picture that's used for the album cover, you might see the rip by the chin. The quick backstory is that large professor said that he was chilling with Nas and he showed him the childhood picture that he planned to use for the cover. He had it laying under a piece of glass and large professor said that when, he, that when Nas went to grab it, it must have stuck onto the area. So when he pulled it, it simply ripped. But who knows? The little things like that are reasons why that cover is a classic. So maybe the story was meant to go that way. So there it is. Some interesting facts about one of hip hop's best albums. If you ever have time, I'd be interested to see if anyone who hasn't heard the album before can hear any current artists from today in his work. Of course, we mentioned J. Cole but I think there might be a few others. Anyways, I appreciate you guys for listening, watching, and everyone who has subscribed, for real. Enjoy the rest of the day, and I'll see you in the next video. Illmatic or ready to die? Illmatic. Okay. Illmatic, in my opinion, is the greatest hip hop album ever. To me, that's one of the. How old was he when he did that? Seventeen. I think he was seventeen. Young as hell. I believe seventeen. Which means, remember, we had to record things a year in advance back then. Which means he probably recorded it at sixteen. It's, yeah, some of those songs before it was like demo. Right. So these with these dumb lyrics, they ain't got yeah, no excuse. We had the dream team. Now.